Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. So today, you know, assuming by this point, um, well, not assuming, I'm gonna guess that a lot of you have seen the video that I put up showing how I broke on my no buy. I'm still feeling pretty bad about it, but what I am really excited is to try a bunch of the products <clears throat> that we got there. Um, obviously, you know, I didn't get you know, new mascara. I didn't get new bronzer or anything like that. So there's going to be some things that I'm just pulling out of my collection and using. Um, also, I do apologize for the state of my hair. I was trying something out. I had watched a video where um, they were showing different ways to like curl your hair and you braid all your hair and then run a hair straightener over it and it kind of gives like a crimped effect. It half worked. My hair doesn't like to curl. It doesn't like to hold that. So I thought this would work. And it's okay. Uh, I'm not going to go too long with my rambling. We're just going to get straight into it. So I only got one primer. We got the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I did just get a mini size. So this is supposed to be a moisturizing and a gripping primer. So we're going to try that out. I'm really curious to see like what it kind of looks like. Um, okay. It looks like kind of like an aqua bomb. Um, it does smell kind of weird and it's very, very grippy, very sticky. It's one of these things that like you can tell you kind of have to work with a little quicker um, just to get it all moving because once it tacks down, it feels like it stays very put, which is a good thing and a bad thing um, just in a sense because you do have to work quickly. That's kind of unfortunate, but it feels like it's going to grip any kind of a foundation or you know, in today's case, a CC cream really, really well. So that's really tacky. You guys can see like it's sticking to my finger. So we're going to give that like a minute or two. I do want to go in with a bit of a pore filling primer. So we're going to fast hands. I caught that. Uh, we're going to go in with my Tarte. I think this is the Timeless Smoothing Primer. I know Tarte has a couple pore filling primers. So I'm just taking just a little bit on my finger and I'm just going into like my problem areas. I really like this primer. It, um, you know, it does a really good job of really smoothing out your pores and stuff like that without, you know, clinging to them, making it look really, really cakey. Um, so that's just knock my camera out of the way. I'm going to bring you guys in a little closer. So that's really nice. Um, you just kind of, I know I'm smoothing it out right now, but it does honestly work the best if you just take it and kind of press it. I find that sometimes when you do just like rub it and smooth it out, um, it kind of just balls up funny. So there's that. For a foundation today, we are going to use my IT Cosmetics your skin but better cc plus illumination color correcting illuminating full coverage cream spf 50 da, da 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 i think i can only assume it's this this smells funny like it smells like almost like my face is now like burning or something like that it's got a really weird chemically smell so if you're sensitive to um like smells in foundations and cosmetics that's not going to be for you update Please ignore everything that I said earlier about this smelling burnt. It turns out that Tom made toast downstairs and it just happened that he made it at the same time that I like opened this and pumped it out. And so I just assumed it was this that smelled, but the whole house smells like burning toast right now. So <laughs> awkward. Uh, so for anybody that was like, I have that primer. It's never done that to me. It wasn't the primer. Just me being a goofball. So I got this in the shade light medium. I have my little, you know, tray here. Um, so we'll just try this out and see how it goes. Now, I am the kind of person I like to put foundation on with a brush. And lucky me, I cleaned my brushes recently. So we've got nice, clean face brushes and eyeshadow brushes to play with today. It's very exciting. So this says that it is full coverage but because it's a cc cream i also kind of am assuming it's going to be kind of lightweight so let's just see here so it has a little scent to it but not a bad scent by any means almost like a little minty the color's good particularly right now i have no i was gonna say fake tan on i don't put fake tan on i go fake tan like I guess it's not really fake tanning. It's like indoor tanning. Because, um, I mean, you come out with a real tan. And I always say, like, I fake bake. But it's not really. 
it's just indoor. I just don't go out in the sun because I don't have time. I wish I did. I also wish I lived in a sunnier place, but it's like raining quite a bit out here today. And you know, it's Canada. Canada, one of the only countries in the world where you can get four seasons a month. And we have been having a month like that. It was like 30 degrees out with humid and like humidity. It was like 40 last week. And the week before it was like, we were worried like things were gonna start freezing over again. People were getting snow. This country's crazy. Can't make up its mind. Okay, so I don't know how I feel about this foundation, CC cream, whatever, which bums me out because I was really excited to use it. I'm just going in with a beauty blender now because I find that sometimes certain foundations like to pick up like brush strokes. Maybe I would have liked this better if I'd gotten the non-illuminating one because this is like, I'll kind of get a little close to you. I can particularly see how glowy it is like in this area. Almost looks like there's a bit of like a pearl to it. I'm just gonna try, my chin is always my problem area so I'm just gonna try and give that a little extra coverage. It's, I don't know, I think this is going to take a couple uses for me to really decide if I like it or not. We'll see how the rest of this makeup goes. I don't hate it. I like the way it makes my skin look. It looks very natural. It's full coverage in a way that it's covering a lot of discoloration, but not so full coverage that it's like taking away from my skin, if that makes any sense. Like I still have a lot of the texture from my skin. I don't know. We'll get back to that later today. So for um, concealer, I did get a new one of these. I am going to use my old one. This is my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the shade Light 2 Vanilla. It is my favorite concealer. I use it all the time. So I just pick it up on a beauty blender and I put a little bit of that down. Now that would probably, I've, I'll be honest with you guys, I've never just used this and left it alone. I always go in with like a liquid concealer afterwards. And I can see that I probably don't need to, um, but we are going to do that today as well, just because I got the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in a different shade. And I just wanna see how I like that shade. So I have two shades in the Creamy Radiant Concealer. I have the shade Light 2 Vanilla, which is a new shade, and Light 2.5 Creme Brulee, which was the shade that I originally had. Oh, what is this baby hair doing here? There we go. So we're going to be using the slightly darker shade for more like spot concealing on our face. And then I want to try the lighter shade for under my eyes just to see if I like the effect of that one better. So like I said, this is, I'll just show you kind of like the shade difference. It's just the slightest, slightest bit darker, this one. So you prop you may not even notice. I can tell a difference, but I'm also sitting right in front of it. So yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not loving the way this foundation is sitting on my face. It looks good from a distance, and maybe with powder and stuff over top, it'll change it a little bit, but from it from close up, it's looking pretty bad. Okay, gonna let that tack down just a tiny, tiny bit. And while that's doing that, we're just going to use my MAC Brow Shape, sh wait, what is this called? Brow Shape and Shade, Shape and Shade Brow Tint. So sorry. This is probably my favorite brow product. I almost got the Urban Decay one, like back in, I guess, February. And I asked a girl to help me pick a color and she did and she handed it to me and I just kind of went with that one. And when I got home, she had given me a different Urban Decay Brow product. Like it wasn't the one I wanted. So I ended up returning it and just saying, screw it, I don't need it that bad. But I do really like this. It makes it really easy to definitely shape out your brow, give it the exact shape that you want. And then it's got like this powder on the other end, which makes it really easy to fill in. 
And then I like to take, if I can find it, a spoolie and just kind of brush the product through, brush the eyebrows in the direction that I want them to go. So now we'll go back in with that beauty blender and uh, blend out that concealer. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that that um, foundation's kind of settling weird and it's not really doing much for coverage. I don't know. This is, and again, it could be because I decided to buy the illuminating one and maybe the normal one works a little bit better. I'm not too sure. I can say that I do like the brighter concealer underneath my eye. I think that that does a really good job of brightening my under eye. So I am very happy with that. For a powder today, we're gonna go into an oldie but a goodie. We're gonna use my Huda Beauty, uh, what is this? Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. This is in the shade Pound Cake. I also have the shade Cupcake. Um, I just thought we would go with this one today because it was the one that was on top, if I'm completely honest with you. The only thing I don't like about this is that it's got like this spring thing, but I don't know, if you use a damp beauty blender like I use, it kind of clogs it in a weird way. I don't know. I'm hoping that powder is also going to... Also, I know some people put powder on with like a brush. Is that a better option? Should I be doing that? I'll try it. I don't know. I don't normally. I normally go with the beauty blender, um, but let's try and... Uh, powder up with a brush. I don't know. See if it makes any difference. I could see it making the product go a little further in the sense that you're maybe not picking as much up on the blender, but having said that, it would also like knock a lot of it more loose. I don't know. All done with that. I don't know. I still think I might prefer it with a beauty blender, but it's always good to try new things. You never know, you might discover something that works better. For a bronzer today, we're just gonna use my NARS Laguna bronzer. I found that I got away from this for so long and now I'm just getting back into it again. I forgot how much I loved it. So I'm just going to take that kind of, you guys know me, I sort of bronze all over my face, but I do try to start the concentration in those areas where the sun would naturally catch. So like, you know, shading around the face and then I just take kind of a layer and just brush it and buff it out everywhere just to give me some evenness, some glowiness. Particularly, I think that this came around because I used to uh, tan in a tanning bed. So I needed to bronze my face up a bit. Just like that. Uh, for blush today, I had asked you guys for suggestions for what you wanted to see me shop my stash and there were a couple blushes mentioned so I thought I would pull one of them into this video since I didn't get a new blush. So today we're going to be using one of my Natasha Denona blushes. Also for anybody who watched the video where Tom picked out my makeup and saw that he dropped one of my blushes. They are both still intact. They are good. This packaging is pretty heavy duty. Um, so we got lucky. So we're going to use this pinky one today. <gasps> All right, I'm back. I'm in less of a state of shock. So uh, what are the chances that something like that happens? So what basically what just happened is when I went to show you guys which blush I had chosen to use, the entire pan fell out and it shattered all over the carpet. I should have shown you guys the aftermath, um, but I was in such a state of shock that I just turned the camera off and immediately went to trying to clean it. Uh, trying to vacuum it up. Now we are doing a um, like neighborhood driveway gathering uh, in about an hour or so. So Tom was outside talking to the guy who organized it because he's the guy's ordering like pizza for everybody. Now I'm not saying like we're all eating the same pizza but like everybody gives their money and he puts in an order for a pizza per household sort of thing um, just so that we can all be outside and socialize together from our driveways from a safe social distance while still having company. So he was outside dealing with that. So I basically went downstairs, grabbed the vacuum cleaner and he heard me vacuuming and asked what happened. And I basically said, so do you remember that blush that you dropped that we thought was fine? Uh, well, it's not fine. So what we're assuming happened is when the whole thing dropped as a whole, 
you know, nothing happened because this is kind of made like an otter box. Like it's really good packaging. Um, but what must have happened and it's not a big deal is that these are old and by old, I mean, I've had them for a couple years. I had them before I started dating Tom. Um, so the glue inside has gotten very dry and brittle. So we're assuming it knocked the glue sort of loose and shifted the actual pan inside the palette. So then when I, you know, held it up to you guys, it toppled out. It is not a big deal. Tom's already said, you know, he already told me even the day that he dropped it that if he broke it, he would replace it. So that's something that I can do if I decide to. I'm still not 100%. Like, it's like any makeup product. If I had broken any makeup product, I'd be a little bit sad that it shattered. It's just heartbreaking to see it go. Hurts a little more because these are, we looked online, they're $49 each. Um, but he basically said he doesn't care if I want a new one. He'll get me a new one. So, you know... A sad time has come. It's like a passing of a product. It's already, I can't show you it. It's already in the garbage and in the vacuum and on cloths. And it, it took a lot of carpet cleaner to get it out, but we're here now. So rather than using that color, I'm going to go in with this slightly lighter one. This is in Alba. Now, luckily, Alba was actually my favorite of the two. Uh, not that I didn't love Rayo, but I actually have a MAC Extra Dimension uh, blush that is a similar color to that. So that's why I'm at the point of... Um, you know, we're not going to rush to go out and repurchase it. It's not the end of the world. It's not like I needed that blush. It was the only one I have. I have a similar product that does almost the same thing in almost the same color. Since I'm ranting about it, this is the one I'm talking about. So this is in Into the Pink. It's an extra dimension blush by MAC. And it really does have virtually the same exact effect that that Natasha Denona one had and knowing that I had this and every declutter I've done I've sort of compared the two and I just haven't been able to part with one of them because I love them so much so maybe what this did was give me an opportunity to part with a blush that I probably should have parted with years ago but I didn't. This is like that whole saying like there's no use crying over spilt milk there's no use crying and whining over a shattered blush. So for a highlighter I wanted to try uh, this like sample packet we got. This is a liquid light serum highlighter from Ilia. Now I don't know what color this is. I don't know what it's going to look like. It's in the color Astrid. I don't know anything about this other than that it came as a free sample. It is a liquid highlighter so I'm just going to squeeze a little out. Okay it's uh kind of like a champagne -y sort of a color so we're just going to do a bit of that. It's very glowy for sure. Let me get you guys a little closer. Ooh, it is very serum-y. It's very, very, like, liquidy. Like, it comes out of the packet kind of in a gel. But then, like, as soon as you start, like, going with it, it turns very, very liquidy very quickly. And I really like that because my biggest problem... Sorry, I'm covering what I'm doing with liquid highlighters a lot of the time is that they have a thicker consistency. So they can be really, really difficult to actually, like, work into the skin really beautifully. I'm going to put some under my eyebrow too just because I have some extra. Um, but I really like this. This has a really nice kind of like, I'm going to just show you guys a little bit on the back of my hand what it's like. So it's got kind of a really, really thin fluid, dare I say serum-y formula um, that just sort of blends out into nothing and just gives you this really beautiful, subtle, light reflective quality. I think it's really nice actually. Hmm. Might have to purchase that in a full size. We shall see. So I have a ton of new eyeshadows to try. Um, so I'm going to try and use a little bit of everything. Now I did buy a Too Faced glitter glue, but since I'm not really using glitters, we're actually going to try another eye primer that I recently got. This came in a boxy charm. So this is the Pretty Vulgar uh, Eyeshadow Primer. So we're going to use this instead. So I'm not normally a big fan of these kind of primers, the ones that come in the tubes like this. I find that they're, you know, a little thick. And the, basically for me, I compare every eyeshadow primer to my MAC Painterly Paint Pot. Every single one doesn't matter. Um, and that's my favorite one, and it will probably always be my favorite one. Um... So I, I recently got rid of almost all of my other eyeshadow primers, but I kept 
but uh, well this one's new so we're gonna try this one out and see how it works. I imagine it's going to work quite like the Too Faced Shadow Assurance which there is nothing wrong with that. Please don't think anything like that if that's your favorite eyeshadow primer. That's great but things work differently for different people and I just prefer the consistency of my MAC one. Alrighty so for shadows I'm gonna move that that highlighter far well I guess the blush but like this was sitting kind of close to the edge and I'm like move it move it move it away move it away don't don't risk it again for eyeshadows we got a bunch from Juvia's Place so I want to try one of that so for today I decided just to use the Nubian because it's a lot of like neutral shades um and then we're also going to be using a little bit out of the Melt Cosmetics um Vita palette because you know there's some nice like fun greens and stuff in there and then we're also going to definitely be using a couple of the in extreme or da these are dazzle shadow extremes um i've got the green one and the gold one out so we're going to be using some kind of a combination of that i don't really know where this is going to go but uh we'll see always the best when we end up in videos like this so this is going to give me a really great opportunity to test out a little bit Oh my god, I'm all over the place now. I'm just so frazzled after doing that. I'm almost like mad at myself for like holding it up. I think I said this for holding it up to you guys, but I always do that and nothing ever happens. So it is what it is. All right. So first things first. Like I said, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of each palette because I really want to, you know, see how the... I've never tried a Juvia's Place eyeshadow before. I really want to see how they work. And I want to see how the quality is in the uh, Melt one as well because I've only ever tried the one and I want to see if it's consistent uh, across the board. So we're going to dig into a toll out of that Melt one. It's like a really right light soft brown. These are really powdery just off the, off the bat. And I'm just going to stick that in here. So something I'm noticing that eyeshadow primer is very sticky. I can feel that my brush is um, kind of getting stuck a little bit and it's like tugging. I'm not a fan of that. And it's definitely the primer. And I did give it a pretty good time to dry. I gave it a couple of minutes before I started actually getting into this. So it's like how long do you need to dry? So that's that's a negative right off the bat. So that's a really pretty color. I think it went on okay considering the primer and I am blaming the eyeshadow primer because I could like feel the brush tugging and then even I put my finger just on it and I could feel it sticking. Now that we've got that in though, maybe it'll be a little better. So now out of the uh, Juvia's Place palette, I'm just going to go into this shade here. It's just like a slightly deeper version of kind of what we've already got going on. Like I said, all my brushes are freshly cleaned, so we're gonna get real pigmentation, real, like, accurate, uh, hopefully, color payoff and whatever. So that's just a, like, the slightest bit warmer than that other one. And that is crazy pigmented, oh my gosh. I had heard that about these, but like, you know, you can hear everything as much as you want, but until you actually see it, you really don't know how good these are. Holy crap. All right, so out of that same palette, let's dig into this kind of like reddish shade, I think. Uh, yeah, it's like a kind of reddy brown. I keep going to use the mirror in this, but there is no mirror in this. That is the one downside to those palettes. But I said it when I um, hauled it, is that I think that they do that just to save cost and keep the prices down for their customers. I don't know, I've never made my own makeup, I don't know how much it would cost to have a mirror in there, but I can imagine it is an extra cost. I definitely could have just done a similar look using only the Melt palette, but I, like I said, I really wanted to get into a bit of both and really see what the uh, Juvia's Place ones could do. So now I'm going to go back into the Melt palette. There's kind of like this olivey green color. It's Agua Ardienta. Ardiente, if you speak Spanish and I'm butchering your language, I'm so sorry. I took Spanish for two years in high school and then I never touched it again. I really like that color. That's super pigmented. 
It is like a khaki, olive -y kind of green. I really like it. I really don't like that eyeshadow primer. It's really giving me problems. I'm actually super annoyed with it. Just as a side note so you guys know. I'm going to go a little bit into the Papel Picardo color. It's that really bright lime green. I want to see how this one works. And I did go into a new brush just to really... Ooh. That's really pretty. It kind of is like... With the colors I have, it's not looking the greatest. It's looking a little like pukey I guess but I don't know I think it's kind of an interesting effect so now I'm going to go into a dark brown now do I want to use they both have a really nice dark brown in them I think we're going to use the Juvia's Place one just because just because I want to and if I could find a pencil brush that I liked okay we're going to go in with this pencil brush and pick up some of this dark brown like that and I am going to use that kind of in the outer corner just to darken it up a little bit onto the lid like that so the eyeshadows are not sitting properly and I'm going to attribute that all to the uh, primer it's kind of getting a little patchy in some areas just where it's like getting stuck and again, I am blaming the primer for that because the eyeshadows themselves are going on where I want them to and they are very, very pigmented. They're just, you know, you can't fault something. It's not really the fault of the eyeshadows for that. So I'm gonna actually smoke out under my eye with a little bit of that Agua Ardiente color. That's that like olive -y kind of color. And I did use the same brush as that chocolate or as the brown from the uh, Juvia's Place palette. So it might have a little bit of that on it as well. Now I'm not going all the way to my inner corner because I want to drag a little green there, I think. So we're going to go in with a different pencil brush. This eye is looking rough. And go a bit into that Papal Picado, but I'm also going to go into the Serape green, which is that shimmer just to darken it a little bit and I'm gonna put that here. Just to kind of bring some of that green back in because that is the kind of color that I want to go with. So I'm going to be taking one of these shimmers. I just want to see how they work. I think we're going to go into this like goldeny brown one and we're going to use that kind of on the outer portion of the eye. Then we're going to go in with the dazzle shadows and see how they sit. So, whoa, these are, um, I took the slightest little amount and it covered almost my whole lid. That's amazing. How have I been living without these shadows for so long? Somebody tell me. Looks like I got really heavy handed right here. So I'm just trying to uh, blend that out a little bit. One eye is so much darker. Why does this always happen to me? I need to focus. Just darken up the other eye, right? That's the way to fix it. So now let's go in with this uh, Joy de Glitz. It's this really pretty green extra dimension shadow and I want that kind of in the inner portion not all the way into the inner corner because I want to use that golden kind of color they they describe it as buttercream on the website I went back and I looked at it these are gorgeous like look at how pretty that is again I just took like the lightest little amount on my finger and it's showing up so well so pretty. I'm so happy. This look ended up actually kind of going exactly how I wanted it to, which is always satisfying. Now we're going to go with Kiss of Klimt. It's like this like light buttercream one, and we're just going to pop that in the inner corner. Whoa. Oh, that is pigmented. Like, that's a lot of it. I've never... 
I can't think of another shadow that I've like put on my finger and tried to tap in the corner that's gone so well. Like just like packed exactly where I want it to. I'm actually super into that. I think it turned out almost kind of like camouflagey, which is so cool. I'm really happy with that. It's good to come back and just do well at the end. So for an eyeliner today, we're gonna try this new Hank and Henry Slick With It uh, eyeliner in blickety black. It's a long wear liquid eyeliner. I got this in a boxy charm. I've never tried it, so let's give it a go, shall we? Wow. So, huh. Now it's brand new, which could be why it's so juicy, but it's going on really juicy. It's not the blackest eyeliner I've ever seen. I do find that it's kind of having a little bit of a difficult time getting over some of that glitter but it certainly is not catching or tugging or dragging. And every once in a while you get an eyeliner where like you try and do a line and for some reason it gets away from you. Maybe the tip is too flexible, but this one is very forgiving. It's going exactly where I want it. I didn't end up with a super thick line, which is perfect for a look like this because I want the eyeshadows to kind of do the talking. I actually really like this. I am really surprised. Wow, that's awesome. For eyeliner, or for, <laughs> so hooked on the eyeliner. For mascara, I am just gonna go in with my Benefit Roller Lash first. And then we're gonna top it off with our Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, just for some volume, and then we will move on to lips. So much like eye products, we got a ton of lip products uh, in that haul, so I pulled a couple. I stayed away from the buxom lip glosses, like the regular lip creams, as much as possible because I already have some, I already know how they wear, but I really wanted to try out the NARS Velvet Lip Glide. I also want it to be kind of a neutral color, especially because I knew I was going to be going a little dark with my eyes. So we've got that, and then we do have a buxom lip polish. This is in the shade Sandy. And I've also got that uh, oil infused lip tint in Reef. I'm not 100% sure which one I'm gonna go, um, but we're gonna use one. But the first thing I wanted to do was just put a liner on just so that this lasts a little longer. So I chose an Urban Decay 24 seven glide on lip pencil. This is in the shade Unicorn. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a sharpen here. I'm trying to uh, like use other lip liners other than my MAC ones just to, you know, get a little bit of Fair play, I suppose. And these ones are really good. They're very similar to the Mac Pro Longwear ones, which I think they discontinued. Which is crazy that they did that. Like, why? Why would you discontinue something that was so good? It hurts my soul. All right, now let's get into this Velvet Lip Glide. This is in the color Unlaced and I'm obsessed with it, so. That lip liner was like a perfect match to this color. So it's not super opaque, I guess is the word I'm looking for. It's very comfortable, very creamy. It might be a little too light for this look, so maybe we will go in with this and kind of darken up that color a little bit. I just think it's a little too 
pinky for how dark the eyes are, how dark the rest of, well, how red the rest of the face is really. Um, so I am going to go in with a little bit of this uh, lip gloss. I should, less is more, less is more. This stuff was super oily. It is an oil infused lip tint. I put a little bit too much, but feels really, really good on the lips. So I'm just going to set it with my Marc Jacobs Recover Coconut Setting Spray. Just cause this is the one I'm trying to use up right now. So we tried a lot of new products. Let's talk about how some things went. So now that I know that this didn't smell like burnt toast, I think I like it. It definitely hung. I need to try it with a foundation that I know how it works. Um, just naturally, to be honest, because, you know, when trying a new primer with a new foundation and something goes wrong, you don't know if it was the foundation or if it was the primer. So I think I like this, but we're going to have to try again. I don't think I like this. I don't like the way it's like sitting on my face. I think it's clinging to places. I don't like from far away. It looks fine. I also found that I got a lot of redness in my face, um, which doesn't normally happen to me. I'm not a very, like, I know a lot of people carry a lot of redness in their cheeks and stuff like that. I'm not one of those people. Um, so I don't know if I'm having like a weird reaction to this or what. I'll find out when I take the makeup off later, but I'm not 100% sold on this. It's going to take a couple more tries to make a definite decision, but for now I'm not sold on that. Um, I mean the concealer, it worked exactly how I wanted to. I am really happy I got a lighter shade. I think that that's going to be the way I go from now on where I use the darker color for spot concealing to match the rest of my foundation and the lighter one to sort of brighten up the under eyes. I think that was a really good idea. Um, the eyeshadow primer, I don't like, I'm not keeping this. It's too sticky. It, it clings weird. Like I just, it all worked out in the end, but like it was a hassle to get there. Whereas if I had just used my Mac Painterly paint pot, it would have been like that. No problem. Easy going. I'm going to just stick with that and that can go away. The eyeliner, probably the biggest surprise of the day. I really like this. I think it's fantastic. I think it gave me the exact thickness of a line I wanted. I could see how it could be easily built up or, you know, I got it though where it was really thin and I struggle with that a lot. It was so fluid. Again, it could just be because it's new and really juicy and full of product, but I really like this. I'm really excited to keep trying it out. The Dazzle Shadow Extremes. These are awesome. If you like a glittery eyeshadow, if you like the look of any of these, I want more shades now. I think they're fantastic. They're so pigmented. They go exactly where you want them to. I wondered if I would need a glitter glue for these, but they seem to have stuck down really, really well. Obviously, I'm going to do a bit of a wear test and see how all this stuff goes throughout the rest of the day. I'll come back and maybe tell you guys, but for now, these are awesome. The Juvia's Place, no surprise, everybody loves these palettes and I can see why. They are so pigmented. The shimmer went on absolutely amazing. The lightest touch, they're not very powdery. There's not a ton of, like there's no fallout in the palette. I'm obsessed. I'm so happy that I finally bit the bullet and tried these. Like I've been missing out and they're amazing. The Melt Cosmetics shadows. I already knew I was a big fan based off these Smoke Sessions palette. This isn't the palette that I originally wanted, but I really like it. I love that you get these green options. I, I just love where these go. The spectrum on this palette is just so imaginative and creative and very, very unique in that it's got all of these bright orangey reds and all of these bright greens, but it's got the colors in the middle to really tie it together. Um, I think it's fantastic. I love the quality of these. There's a lot of fallout in the pan, but on the eyes itself, it's not bad as long as you tap the brush and they are so pigmented and blend beautifully. I love that. As far as the two lip products go, I don't know. I really like the uh, infused lip oil. It's very comfortable, very pigmented, gave a great finish. And I think it looked really good on top of this. I think the only thing that might be throwing me off about this might be the color. It's also not super opaque. It was kind of sheer going on. It might take a couple layers to get used to, but overall, I am very, very happy with the look we ended up with. We had a, uh, let's have a moment of silence for my blush that we lost today. 
it will forever be remembered and in my heart and ultimately it will eventually probably make its way back into my collection. Obviously not that exact one, but another one. Um, and Tom feels bad. So, it, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm not going to be mad about it. It is just a blush. It's not like somebody died. It's not a big deal. So, uh, I really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun playing with some new things. I really liked the look we ended up getting. So if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've had similar experiences with any of these products, good or bad. Um, you know, any kind of a look you want to see me use next. I'm still looking for ideas for my next Shop My Stash video, which will be coming this week. Well, I'll be filming it this week. It'll come up whenever it comes up. So definitely comment down below that. If you are not already, then hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.